What's up everybody, Leo D here with another vlog and in this vlog I finally received the brand new Pioneer XDJ RX3. I'm so excited to finally have this unit. Back when I got my pair of CDJ3000s and I saw the record box interface on that device, the new features, the layout, uh, really really love that unit. Uh, if I'm out DJing mobile events, that's the gear that I usually use. But whenever I don't use that gear, the next step down that I use is my RX2. And though obviously the RX2 does not have the same features as the CDJ3000s. So now that Pioneer brought those features over to this RX series, I can't wait to take this unit out on the road. Looking at the RX2 and the RX3 side by side, the body size is about the same. Uh, there are obviously the, the larger enhancements to the RX3, like the larger screen, more color effects. But I'm not gonna read off all the features that are available on the RX3. I'm just gonna point out a few that I find interesting and I seem to like already after using this, using this unit for a couple days. Now I currently don't have a road case for the RX3. I do have a road case for the RX2. And as you can see, I put the unit in that case and it fits perfectly. The only difference is right over here, the larger screen does come up to the very edge of the box so I wouldn't want to take this out on the road but it is interesting to see that the unit body wise is the same exact size as the RX2. Now I will say at the time of this recording Pioneer has not released any firmware updates to this unit. The unit is as is out of the box brand new off the production line so whatever issues are naturally occurring in the box they're happening. Also at the time of this recording the unit does not support Serato. But I know that there's some Serato users out there that are interested in this unit. So when that firmware update is released, I know one Serato user that I can call and have him come out and give this unit a test drive. So the first thing you notice about the RX3 is just the large screen. It's very bright, very clear uh, compared to the CDJ3000. Uh, also very bright, very clear, just uh, amazing quality there. Just to show one more time just how big the screen on the RX3 is compared to the other large screen of the CDJ3000. These are the my tags that I have in my collection. As you can see, it only holds so much. But when you look at it on the RX3, you have so much real estate. It is amazing. It's a great look. Just like on the CDJ3000s, you have the ability of using the preview to listen uh, prior to loading a song. Um, at first, I didn't think this feature was that big of a deal, but once you use it a couple times, uh, you realize that it's a much quicker way of finding a song you're looking for rather than actually loading it and then listening to it. You simply press the Q button in the headphone section and then just put your finger under the preview and then it'll start to play. And that little bit of time saving is a big benefit to you if you're trying to jump around from song to song and trying to find a song that you're looking for. You don't have to wait to load the song. You can just simply find it, preview, realize that's the song you want, and then load it. Another feature that they put on the RX3 that I really like is the beat effects section on the screen. If you're familiar with the DJM900 Nexus 2, um, you have your FX pad right here, which has your beat grid and then a touch slider for the effects. On the RX3, you can hit the beat effects and now you have that same X-pad style where in this section because of the effects I selected you have your beat breakdown and then if I come over to a different type of effect now you have your X-pad and what's really cool is if you like this if this is an effect that you're going to use often you can save that effect and then go over to another effect and save that one and then go to a third one and save that one and these will override whatever you select down here in the effects section or if you change back then they will work just the same so if you want to if you're at pitch and you want to use slip roll then you can just take control over the effects section by that now the other thing that I like about this unit is that it's still compatible with Rekordbox 5.85 which is the version of Rekordbox that I use on all the devices that I currently own now I did test this with some media exported out of the newest version of Rekordbox, which right now is version 6.6.1. And um, it worked okay. It 
just a couple uh, added features were available, but nothing that I would uh, at this time want to upgrade to just for that. Now I've used this unit for about five days. I got it about I got it about six days ago, and um, it's very very similar to the RX2. So I was very comfortable navigating around. Um, if you're looking for a standalone unit and you want to disconnect from the laptop, this is definitely uh, a unit that I highly recommend. Um, obviously, you have to use Rekordbox. You have to convert to Rekordbox, whatever. But I've always felt that the Rekordbox interface on these devices is so much more intuitive than it is on the laptop. Um, everything that you ever want to do is maybe one or two touches on the device where on the laptop it might take three or four mouse clicks to get to that same point. So that's why I always feel like this interface is the best interface to use Rekordbox. So full disclosure, there are some issues that are keeping me from using this unit out at Molo Lens right now, but I know that Pioneer will address those via firmware uh, eventually. Uh, and until then, um, I'll just keep this unit at home, test it out, do different things with it here. Um, obviously, I don't have a road case for it yet, so as soon as I get a road case, that's another thing that's keeping me from using it out in the field. But definitely, definitely, it's definitely a unit that I'm very, very happy to have and very excited to start using out at events. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about the unit, please put them down in the comment section. I will try my best to answer all your questions. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, please subscribe. I have some more videos coming, especially when the firmware that enables Serato on this unit comes out. Uh, like I said, I know that one Serato user who is very, very interested in checking this unit out and its compatibility with Serato. So once again, thanks for watching. Good night.